Hey everyone, today we are going over section 15 of our RV10 build, which is the rear wing spar. Uh, there is a service bulletin that comes into play here in this section, so be sure to stick around and see how it went. <laughs> So pretty much right off the bat here in section 15, you are going to be jumping right into the service bulletin. That is SB 16-03-28. If you don't know where to find the service bulletins by now, um, it's over here on the Vans Aircraft website. You can go in here and um, I get access to all of the different service bulletins that they have for the different aircraft. So for this one, SB 16-03-28, you're going to have a whole nother set of parts that they've sent you and instructions that replace step two. Um, so you're, you're not going to end up actually doing step two of, uh, on 15-2 that, that gets replaced by the service bulletin. And then I believe for these new builds, it starts with step 15 on the service bulletin. Remember that service bulletins address also flying aircraft. So the instructions before that address how to remove the affected component. Um, and since we're doing a new build, it starts there. I think again, it was on step 15 um, with how to now use the new pieces that they've sent you to address the, the service bulletin there. On step 24 here of the service bulletin, um, you can see here in the picture, it's talking about you need to countersink these holes. And because of the placement there on that uh, aluminum angle, you can't get the the cage of the the micro stop there around the countersink to fit. So uh, there's a couple different ways, obviously, that you could address it. I think we've talked about this before, but um, you know, using either like a deburring tip to to countersink it little by little until you get to the right depth, or hooking up that cutter to say like a drill press or something, and then just slowly going in there. Um, again, it's just different ways to go and try and countersink it, but the, yeah, the cage just didn't fit here on the W1013F uh, left and right for that step there in 24. In step three, where it says to machine countersink the aft holes is indicated in figure three of the inboard face of the W1013C right uh, aileron hinge bracket side, for the head of a 4264 rivet, um, we code that to the W1013A trimmed spacer when we were doing the countersinking, just because with the thickness there of that W1013C right, it was just thin enough that we were concerned that while we were countersinking, it might get to the point where it starts to enlarge the hole a little bit. Um, be, while you were like countersinking it for the head of that 4264 rivet. And so just by keeping them clico together, it elongates the hole and helps guide the pilot there on the countersink cutter just to help make sure to hold it all lined up and to not end up having any chatter while we were countersinking it. In step five, it tells you to press a bearing into the W1013A and W1013A trimmed aileron hinge bracket spacers using two different drive sockets. Um, the only thing that was a little bit interesting here is you, you're using, you have like four different components that you're holding. So you have the bearing and then the spacers and then the two different sockets, and then you're trying to operate the vise. So the only thing I did to try to help, as you can see here, is I use a little piece of wood uh, and then the cleat goes that were in the spacer to help prop up the spacer and hold it vertical while I then was able to uh, line up the sockets around the bearing and the other side there of the spacer to then squeeze it together. But it worked out perfectly just like the instructions said. It was just, tr I think, just trying to line everything up the first time because there were so many little pieces was the only slightly tricky thing. You can see here that I was actually making my Vans aircraft light box that Tyler had bought me for a Christmas present at this time while he was working on the rear spars. That is a different video. I will put a link here above and below if you want to go and see uh, the building of the Vans aircraft sign. On 15-3 step four, while you have that W1007D outboard rear spar doubler plate clicked in place, it has you trace the aileron pushrod hole uh, into the doubler plate there. And then you take it off and you now cut that hole into the doubler plate. And so Ty went and used the um, uni bit that we had to go and drill some large holes there into it, but then to finish off the edges, 
we got out the Dremel with this, uh, I think it's about a half inch drum uh, on the end of it there to then finish sanding it off and grinding it down to the final size. Uh, it definitely went through quite a few of those uh, little sanding drums because um, it's a, it was, you know, it's aluminum, it's a lot. But I think it worked out really well with the curvature there of the hole. You can see in the drawing that it is a, the hole has a radius of half an inch on two parts of it and then a three eighths inch radius. This is obviously a half inch diameter drum so it's not exactly the same but the curvature was such that I think it worked out really well with trying to um, grind down the edges to match the radius there of the hole that you traced onto the doubler plate. And then he finished it off with the deburring bit to smooth everything out. So this is so genius, some of the stuff the way this is set up. Look how bands put it together. <laughs> but the slit is exactly in the right place. You know, it's like, it just, who knew? It's like, who would have thought that? You know, when I was seeing it, like, oh, come on now. Nope, that shit fits, it's like, bloop, and it just fits perfect. It's like the can it that way. It's like an engineer thought about it. So now we're on to 15-4, step one, and you are going to be clicoing everything to the wing now. So the rear spar reinforcement fork, rear spar doubler plate, inboard and outboard rear spar doublers, the uh, aileron hinge bracket assembly, and the spar to, to everything. But one thing to notice here, and I don't think I mentioned it earlier, but it was mentioned in 15-2, I think it was step seven, is that you're only working with the inboard aileron hinge bracket assembly right now. The outboard aileron hinge bracket assembly gets set aside and you don't work with that until the next section, section 16, after you've gotten those top skins riveted on. So the outboard uh, aileron hinge bracket assembly is, is set aside and you don't use it anymore um, like in this step, everything's just with the inboard one. There was something that I thought was kind of interesting here in this step when we were doing all the drilling and I made a little video here to point it out. All right, so looking at this inboard side of the rear wing spar, um, something that came up when we were uh, match drilling the doubler to the spar was on these two ribs. So you can see like going down the rest of the the spar there, all those holes are all lined up. Um, and you have also then, let me see, holes in the uh, ribs that correspond to those. So it goes all the way down on all of them where you have those holes in the same spot on the ribs. So the one place now where it's different is here on these two ribs. So if you see those, um, holes in the doublers do not match up to that line of holes there in the back of the spar. And um, so you have, to, when you drill it, it ends up actually, if you see here, so see you end up then with like that extra set of holes. So it doesn't just, uh, it doesn't just line up. You have to end up uh, match drilling a hole through the doubler and this bar and everything into the ribs there on both sides. So that was just something that was kind of interesting that came up. But yeah, there you go. There's one other area here on 15-4 step one and the very last step where your final drilling number 40, the holes common between the lower rear spar web flange and the ribs lower aft tab. Uh, if you remember from the wing ribs section, the outermost rib on both wings, we cut that aft flange off of that wing rib there, the outermost wing rib. And so because of the design here of the rear spar, the upper flange of the rear spar points aft, the lower flange points forward. The only thing at the moment that is connecting those outermost wing ribs to the rear spar, as you see here in figure one on 15-4, is the one little hole with the um, the lower aft tab there on the rib where it attaches to the, the lower flange there of the rear spar. So, you only have that one little thing to connect them together. And so you can see here, uh, I got them aligned and then used a Clico clamp to hold it together for doing the uh, the final drilling there uh, of that one hole between those two little pieces. 
Something else to keep in mind here for all the steps on 15-4 is remember you have the service bulletin. So all of the diagrams there, figure one and figure two with the rivet callouts and the, the um, orientation of all the parts, you don't have the same uh, aileron hinge bracket assembly that you did in the instructions. It's, it's a different setup, it's different pieces and it's different rivets then because of the different pieces. So all of the new information you need for how it's supposed to be assembled onto the rear spar and then the rivets that you're supposed to use is in figure 14 on page 12 of the service bulletin. So just, just keep that in mind uh, when you're putting everything together and doing all the steps there on 15-4. All right, so you've done drilling, there's some countersinking there in step two, uh, and in step three, you are taking everything apart, and it says to final drill number 40 and dimple the 26 inboard most holes that are located in the upper flange of the rear spar web above the rear spar reinforcement fork. And so if I remember correctly, the reason why it has you do this is because the next step, you're riveting that rear spar reinforcement fork and the doubler plate onto the rear spar. And because of the thickness of those, once they are riveted on, you're not going to be able to fit the uh, dimple dies to try and dimple that um, upper flange there of the rear spar after that, and it needs to be dimpled to receive the dimples in the top skin that you're gonna put on then in section 16, the next section. So again, I, if I remember correctly, that's why they have you go and final drill and dimple those 26 now. It's important to make sure to get those done before you end up doing the riveting, otherwise uh, the, the, the dimple dies just won't fit once those uh, two pieces have been riveted onto the rear spar. And so now we're on the last step here of the rear spar where you're gonna be riveting everything together, remembering that some of the rivets are different than what's on figure two on 15-4 because of the service bulletin. Uh, but for the most part, everything was really straightforward and easy and I was able to get it riveted on with the um, pneumatic squeezer with the Longeron yoke. But there was one exception here where it was around the um, inboard aileron hinge bracket assembly that you are riveting there. Uh, in particular, if you look at figure 14 on page 12, it is these three holes here that were circled. When you are trying to rivet those on, you have the, the aileron hinge bracket on one side, the flap hinge bracket on the other side, the rib on the opposite side of the rear spar, and you have the shop heads that are already attached to uh, that aileron hinge bracket assembly so trying to to get like i mean the squeezer was out of the question there was just like no way to fit it around the two brackets and the rib and then even trying to get in there with the double offset rivet set with the rivet gun um because of those shop heads it just it made it tricky trying to get it lined up there straight to, to hit it right so we ended up riveting it from the like inside there so the forward side and i uh, also found it was helpful for us to take off the left small doubler when we were riveting those three holes the left small doubler doesn't like it's not connected to those three holes it doesn't get it's not part of it and, and it just got something out of the way a little bit to help out while you were uh, just trying to get those three so we riveted it from that inside facing aft and then got those on and then put the left small doubler on and we're able to go and finish riveting it on that way. Um, so that was just the one area that was a little bit tricky, but it was also kind of funny because in the very last part of step four, it says that you should, you know, rivet that ass bracket assembly last to improve access to the rib at that location for riveting. And, um, it was just kind of funny because yeah, the, the rib was easier to get on, but it was, I found it amusing because <laughs> we were sitting here going, how do we get these three rivets in, in this one tight little spot now? So it was just kind of funny. <laughs> but there you have it. So everything is now riveted together. It was really, really cool to have these like rigid wings now sitting there in the garage and see just like the size and feel like, oh man, this is like really like sturdy and everything. So it was just a really cool feeling. It was very exciting as you can see here in the photos. But thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to give me a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so for more videos like these and to follow along as we build our RV10. I'm doing an obstacle course. I understand. Yeah.
and nail the disc out. <laughs> See you.